things I love and hate about this brand and in this video I want to leave my honest opinion about Le Labo fragrances, a few that I have tried so far. I purchased one fragrance recently, my absolutely favorite from Le Labo, it is Bergamot 22. I got a miniature bottle because I want to carry it with me in a bag, but also having a ever-growing perfume collection, I thought that 15 milliliter is just the right format for me and the bottle looks really cute. Le Labo uses simple cardboard packaging that is ecological and minimalistic, but the samples, they could have packed them better. On the sticker they wrote my name, the place and time where and when it was packed and the name of Le Labo technician, Suki, who packed my bottle. With all my respect to Suki, I don't think I need to carry their name on my bottle. And among all the people involved in production of the fragrance, why is it the person who filled in my bottle deserved to be printed on it? Hmm? And on the back the sticker is so uneven, they could have put a bit more care and effort. But let's talk about the scent. It's such a happy and energizing bergamot scent that brings me such good emotions when I spray it in the morning, just makes my day more cheerful. It's such a great scent for work, for a busy day, for an active day. It's very non-offensive and unisex fragrance. It's like a nice guy that everyone loves. I liked it since the first time I sniffed it. It's really, really nice fragrance. It is excellent for any season, but especially for summer, because it is so refreshing and it's such an easy grab for me. It's a mood booster. I feel a little bit happier every time I smell this scent. Notes mentioned here are bergamot, petit grain, grapefruit, amber, musk, touch of a fever. It is fresh and citrusy 80% of the time, but this soft base with masks and I think there is a touch of vanilla also. The soft base, it allows a nice transition into more evening fragrances. For example, if I want to use something deeper, something darker, more sweet in the evening, it can be easily layered on top of this fragrance when it fades. I love bergamot in general. I think it's my favorite citrusy note. And I'm really happy I found this one. I can give it 10 on 10 easily because I think it deserves it. I'm gonna rate all the fragrances today to make my opinion more clear. Next fragrance is Legendary Santal 33. A smell of downtown, expensive business center. This is how I see this fragrance. It has notes of cardamom, iris, violet, sandalwood, cedarwood, leather and musk. It is first of all a woody fragrance. Sandalwood here is main and front. I get some leathery notes, but mostly sandalwood, which is green and a bit salty here. What attracts me the most in this fragrance is the feeling of paper. It's like a fine quality paper in a planner with the leathery cover, the attribute of uh, an expensive business center. This fragrance brings me a feeling of safety and stability. I feel put together, concentrated when I'm with this fragrance. I really like it and if you haven't experienced it yet, I can highly recommend because it is so much in the spirit of time. It's such a nice contemporary progressive fragrance, this paper-like leathery sandalwood. It's a great fragrance and it impressed me the first time I tried it, so I think I'm gonna give it 8 out of 10. One of the best fragrances from Le Labo. Our next fragrance is Tenoir 29. It is maybe my second favorite from Le Labo. I just love the scent profile, this green, dark, comforous scent. This summer I purchased a bottle of Abyssal from L'Artisan Parfumeur and those two fragrances have quite a lot in common. I just prefer Abyssal a little bit more because it's softer and slightly more aquatic. But speaking about Tenoir, what attracts me the most in this fragrance is the feeling of dryness, in a good way. 
there are many dry and herbal notes here bergamot, fig, bay leaves, cedarwood, vetiver, musk, hay and tobacco sometimes I crave this dryness in fragrances it has such effect on me how to say it dries my emotions and sometimes I really need it it keeps me fresh-headed and relaxed it has a little medicinal feel that I really love I love medicinal scents because for me they are associated with care with health actually <laughs> and this touch of fig here it's just so right no other fruit would work in this composition just so in place it's a handful of dry herbal notes with the touch of sweetness from fig i really like this scent but having a bottle of abisai i'm not sure if i need this one they're quite similar maybe 15 ml like this can be interesting as for the rating i'm gonna give it 8.5 out of 10 it's maybe my second favorite from the brand let's move on to another 13 where is it maybe it ran away because he knows that i don't like him I like nothing about this fragrance. I tried to wear it many times in different seasons, different temperature, still nothing. It opens fruity, like pear, apples, I get this. But after that, for the rest of the day, I feel, I feel synthetic something that is very faint and very boring. I absolutely don't understand what people see in this fragrance what do they like it for many perfume enthusiasts this is the favorite from le labo maybe it doesn't work with my skin chemistry i don't understand i cannot say that i don't smell it i do i just don't like it in fact every time i spray it i want to wash it off a few hours later still a mystery for me what do people find in this scent I keep testing it persistently, but I haven't found the truth yet. Among notes mentioned on the website, Ambroxid, Jasmine, Moss. I just personally don't like this scent. I'm gonna rate it 1 out of 10. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't get offended if it is your favorite from Le Labo. Maybe it works with your chemistry very nicely and I'm really happy for you. But for me, just a big no. Next fragrance will be Tonka 25. I love Tonka bean fragrances and I was curious what kind of Tonka bean Lela Bo can offer. For me this is quite clean Tonka, complemented with the touch of floral and musky notes. It has the note of orange blossom, which brings a bit of freshness, a bit of floral touch to the fragrance, but I cannot say that I'm a big fan of this combination, tonka bean and orange blossom. I prefer tonka bean with lactonic nuances, with the touch of vanilla, a bit more gourmand tonka bean, but I have to say this is pretty unique, it makes it unique. It has musk and a touch of vanilla in a base, and that works really nicely, the tonka bean musk, vanilla, other notes from the website are musk, vanilla, orange blossom, cedar, styrax, tonka. It is very gentle tonka and can be very nice for men and women. I really like it, I'm just not the biggest fan of tonka bean orange blossom combination. It's a nice scent for everyday use to feel yourself more put together, more confident. I love its softness and warmth. I can give it 8 out of 10 easily. Really nice scent. Then I have a few CT exclusive fragrances that I especially wanted to try. CT exclusives are very expensive. 10 euros for a sample, that's ridiculously expensive. <laughs> Look how they are packed in those cardboard tubes that are really hard to unglue and they just look so... It's nice that it's ecological, but it's not the 
quality of a luxury product. Benjoin 19. This is a Moscow exclusive. I was very curious about benzoin scent. I love benzoin and fragrances together with labdanum and vanilla. It's a classic contemporary amber accord. Here we have benzoin with olibanum, musk, amber, cedar. It is really sweetless, no sweetness, only resinous, smoky scent. It's very nice ambery scent and it's really long lasting on my skin. I've been to Moscow once and very shortly, but intuitively I think that this benzoin golden ambery scent profile is a great choice for Moscow. Olibanum is an attribute of every Orthodox church and it kind of smells like um, this comforting quiet atmosphere of the dark Orthodox cathedral decorated with gold. Very timeless, very nice scent. Maybe it appeals to me because I carry some good emotions about this scent profile. I was raised as an Orthodox and the scent of Olibanum frankincense, it's so familiar since childhood. Anyway, the scent, it imprints in your skin so beautifully, it just melts on your skin. But this pure Olibanum is not the easiest to reach for me, it's not my everyday scent choice. It was a nice olfactory experience to try this Lelabo fragrance, so I think I'm gonna give it 7 out of 10. Another city exclusive is Gayak 10. What impressed me the most is the smokiness on the start. It opens very woody immediately and a bit synthetic like a lacquered wood, but in a such a nice way. It's very tranquil scent. It's perfect as a pers for a personal use, but it can be also a nice ambient scent, interior scent. For me, it brings the vibe of the clean room of minimalist interior, lit by the sunlight, but still has shadows in the corners. Comment from an architect. It's like that, it is clean, but dark. It brings the olfactory experience of um, new interior, fresh materials, still having the skin-like qualities. That is what makes it unique. It is intimate, it doesn't project a lot, but it's such an easy wear. It is great in its simplicity. Notes here are Gayak, Musk, Cedar, Olibanum. Just like I said, softly smoky skin scent. I like it. I can rate it 7.5 out of 10 and I can recommend this very delicate scent. Let's move on to some florals from Le Labo. Most of them I got as a gift for the purchase and they arrive in such micro splash bottles, which is really annoying. I'm wondering, does this kind of small natural spray cost a lot more than the splash bottle? Why can't they just put all the fragrances in a spray bottle so I can have a nice sampling experience? Rose 31 I'm confused about this scent. In a dry down, it's a wow fragrance. It's a beautiful resinous note that is so pleasant to smell from the skin. But the opening, the first half an hour, is disgusting to my nose. It has a note of cumin. This note of cumin, it makes me nauseous. I don't like cumin neither in perfumery nor in cuisine when it's very prominent. And here it is prominent. But as I said, the dry down is really beautiful. There are notes of rose, centifolia, cumin, olibanum, amber, cedar, gayak and musk. I like the idea of a contrast between warm and fresh, masculine and feminine. I love the concept of the spicy rose. I just wish it wasn't cumin, maybe black pepper or ginger. I would enjoy much more in this fragrance. So despite the beautiful dry down, this fragrance is a no for me because passing through this cumin stage is a torture for me. It is pretty long lasting though. 
I'm gonna rate it 5.5 out of 10. I'm disappointed by the opening. Next one will be Lis 41. That is nice. White floral with lilies and tuberose. That's a nice floral scent. It is green and rather clean smelling. It is my favorite floral from Le Labo so far. It has a slightly salty scent, a bit marine-like, which is quite common for lilies. It's very sensual and a bit more feminine by its nature, I think. It's very good, especially for summer, can be so lovely. It's a scent of vacation by the sea, a scent of careless, happy life. Notes here are jasmine, tuberose, lily, vanilla and musk. Many Lelabo fragrances have a touch of vanilla in the base, which is not prominent, but brings a little bit of softness, a bit of warmth to the fragrance. I will rate it 7.5 out of 10. It's very lovely, but doesn't last very long. It fades pretty quickly. Still lovely. Then we have Fleur d'Oranger 27. Pretty nice basic orange blossom fragrance. It's very pleasant, but in general I find the note of orange blossom quite boring when it is solo, like here. It smells clean, a bit soapy, it smells like a hotel room in the south of Italy. I feel like in Italy everything is orange blossom scented. What brings a bit of fun to this fragrance is the note of green tea. It's not mentioned, but I feel it. The scent is very pleasant to breathe in. It's a pleasure to be in this scent bubble of orange blossom, but it's rather boring. It can be a nice after shower, after gym spritz, but that's it. It's just an okay orange blossom fragrance. The notes here are orange blossom, bergamot, petit grain, lemon, musk. Very citrusy, very fresh. Let's rate it. 6 out of 10. It's a basic goodie. Last floral I have is Jasmine 17. My first emotion from the scent was, oh, it's sweet, it's so sugary. It felt fresh and exciting, but when it opened up, I was more disappointed than impressed. It starts to smell vintage on me, like old-fashioned fragrance. There is something so uncomfortable and soapy in this fragrance. On a website, the brand um, writes about this fragrance as a contemporary alternative to old-fashioned jasmine uh, signature scent. But for me, it still smells old-fashioned. Notes here are jasmine, musk, sandalwood, vanilla. Again, there is a touch of vanilla that brings a little bit of softness to the fragrance. But overall, I don't enjoy it and I feel like vanilla is separate, jasmine is separate, everything is separate. It doesn't blend very well together. And so this uneven olfactory experience is kind of off-putting for me. Not very worthy scent, in my opinion. I will rate it 4.5 out of 10. I don't like it that much. Please don't get upset if I disliked your favorite fragrance. We might have different experiences, preferences, different skin climate. There are no good and bad fragrances. It's all individual. Overall, my opinion about Le Labo is bittersweet. Some fragrances I love. The other fragrances I don't like at all. Packaging is ecological, that's a plus, but very poor. Especially the sampling, discovering experience, like offering splash bottles, it's just greedy. The design, it's minimalist and sleek, I like it. But the biggest disappointment is the price-quality ratio, extremely overpriced for what it is. And that's the main point that upsets me. I hope my honest review was helpful. I wish you a very good day. Goodbye. <music>